So with gang, we back, baby, with another one, doing it how we doing it, giving all thanks and all glory to the most high, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Father God, the King of all kings, the rule of all nations, baby. And today we got a real juicy story, man. It's a pretty entertaining story, man. And we about to go ahead and dive right on into it. Let's go. All right, man. So today I want to tell y'all about this story, man. Uh, I'm going to try to make it as quick as I can, but I'm about to give y'all this uh, little juicy story of a situation that I encountered you know, back when I was like 18, 19, you know, I was dating this female. And, uh, you know, I think it's pretty normal or was pretty normal. Not that it's right. Not that it's right. I'm not saying it's right. I don't condone it. You feel me? Because it has been a lot of situations that have been left doing this shit. But, you know what I'm saying? So, like I said, I don't agree with it. But, you know, unfortunately, it's kind of normal for, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds you know, the girl to sneak the boyfriend in the crib, you know what I mean? Uh, for whatever reason, it could be the parents may not condone her dating or the parents may not condone her dating, you know, this certain uh, guy of this certain race, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be, you know, there are different reasons why females sneak guys in the crib. What kind of toes you got? Your toes look like Skittles? And it's not just random guys, you know, it's not just like different guys coming all through the crib, at least not for every female. But I feel like the normal situation is that puppy love, you know, that high school sweetheart shit that, you know, when you're in high school, you get your first love and y'all head over heels for one another and y'all, you know, y'all in love, you know what I mean? And she's sneaking you in the crib, but at the same time, you know, she plan on building a future with you. At the same time, you plan on building a future with her. You know, it's not some shit like I'm just coming through to smash and I'm out. Nah, now that's some disrespectful shit. If we actually in a committed relationship, we actually love one another. You know, we spend time with one another. You know, when Valentine's Day come around, birthdays come around, we gift one another, we take one another out, we're doing these things. We're in a full-blown relationship, you know, whether it's condoned or not. Okay. You know, whether it's understood or not. Okay. You know what I mean? Whether people agree with it or not. Okay. You may not condone it. You may not like it or agree with it, but they're in a full-blown relationship. They're in love. They're spending time with each other every day. Just because you don't condone your child dating somebody of another race or whatever race or whatever does not mean that they're not going to because you are attracted to and you like whoever you like. You may be attracted to people in your same race. You may be attracted to people of this race. Your child may be attracted to somebody of another race or even the same. You know what I mean? So you can't, con you, you can't control who they are attracted to. Bitch, you got me fucked up. Who they like, who they date. You can't control that. So stop trying to. You understand? You have to understand that your child is going to grow. They have to grow and change. Everybody has to grow and change. Plants grow and change. Trees grow and change. Everything and everybody have to grow and change. Nobody can stay the same. So as they're growing up and they're 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, where they're about to go to college or they're already off in college, it's like you got to understand they're growing into adulthood. At 18 years old, a female is adult. 21 years old, a male is an adult. So you can't go around controlling what they do, how they do, where they go, who they hang with, who they date, how they date. Ain't nobody got time for that. I know a lot of females from homegirls to cousins to sisters. You know what I'm saying? I grew up around a lot of females. If you try to put a hole on them and control them, and tell them what they can and can't do, what they can and can't wear, where they can and can't go, who they can and can't hang out with. If you try to control them, they're going to rebel even more. They're going to rebel even more. And not only that, if you try to tell them what they can and can't do and can and can't wear and all that shit, it's not that they're not going to do it. It's just they're not going to do it around you. They're going to do this shit behind your back. But it's still going down. You can bet that. This is so intense. Oh, 
You can fucking bet that. It's still going down. They're still going to wear what they want to wear. They're just going to put up. They're going to grab their outfit that they want to wear. Throw that shit out the window. Into the backyard. Put on whatever it is that you want them to wear. They're going to come downstairs like, all right, I'm about to go out. I'm about to go hang out with my homegirls. You're going to be looking at them like, okay, all right, all right. My nigga. <laughs> okay, cool. I like that outfit. All right. As soon as they walk out the door, they go into the backyard, grabbing that motherfucking uh, outfit that they want to wear, changing, throwing the outfit that you approved of into the bushes, and they out. It's common sense. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. That's a fact. So, moving forward, I was dating this female, and, uh, you know, at the time, you know, we was high school sweethearts. We met in high school. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. You know what I mean? Uh, we was getting serious fast. And we fell in love. You know, we was in love. So, you know, I would come over to her crib because me and my OG, I ended up, you know, getting kicked out of school. And when I got kicked out of school, she was still going to school. But, you know, at 17 years old, I was, you know, I wasn't going to school. So I was kind of influencing her. A little bit to skip school because now mind you she was skipping school before i got kicked out of school because we were skipping school together mind you now let me put that out there because i don't want to make it seem like i'm just a bad guy and she was an angel you know while we was in school i remember i had a test and she wanted to skip and i was like nah i shouldn't even skip today i gotta take this test but she was like man let's go skip fuck that let's dip and i was influenced so i'm like fuck it let's dip cap <laughs> <laughs> And me and her dipped off. We skipped school. We left school. Boom, we went out. We kicked it. And, and the crazy shit about that is that day we were told a senator was coming to speak. I think it was a senator or whatever at that time. We were told a senator named Barack Obama was coming to the school to speak. This was before he was the president. You know what I mean? And I ain't gonna lie. At the time, I didn't really give a fuck because I didn't know who he was. No, I'm, I wasn't in the politics, still not. But at that time, I had no fucking clue that this was going to be the first black president. I had no fucking clue that he was even going to be the president uh, president eventually at all. You know what I mean? I'm thinking that this is just a guy in politics coming to speak. I ain't trying to hear that shit. That shit going to be boring anyway. That's what I was thinking at the time as a kid. Yeah, you, you know what? You thought wrong. But... You know, I'm thinking, man, I got to take this test next period, bro. I really ain't, I really shouldn't even be skipping out right now. You feel me? Because I feel this test. So I don't take this test. My mama going to be on my ass. You hit me? So I'm like, man, I probably shouldn't even do it. She's like, man, come on, let's go dip. Ooh. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. Let's go dip. So we skip school. Boom. We out on the town. Missed the test. Now we skipped that period. But when I came back, because we skipped that period, but we came back. When I came back, it was the time where Barack was doing the assembly. So I walk, we walk into the building, boom. So she go to her next class. I go to my next class. My next class, when nobody in there. So I said, boom, they're probably downstairs at the assembly. So I go downstairs and go to the assembly, but they wouldn't let me in. Now I regret that shit like a motherfucker. You know? Moving forward, we end up moving from, uh, from that town. We end up moving back to the FP, back to uh, Forest Park. I don't give a fuck. But me and old girl were still together. You know what I'm saying? And she, so when we moved back to the FP, you know, from the FP to where she lived at, it was like 30, 35 minute, you know, drive. You know what I mean? So we was a good little distance from each other, but we were still in a relationship. We was, you know, a little distance, but we still wanted to make it work. So I knew I had to, you know, put that responsibility on my back. And in order for this shit to work, I got to really put forth the effort and come to see her. So we can spend time. Okay. So moving forward, you know, uh, we got back out to that piece. So I would take the bus to the train and take the train out there to where she lived at. And then I would get off the train and walk to her crib. You know what I mean? And that's just how we started to do it at that point. But when I would do that, her family, they didn't, uh, they didn't condone us being together. You know, her family, they were against her dating me because you know, she was Asian, you know, and I was black and her family was racist. You know, they didn't want her with a black guy. They even told her that they wanted her to either be with somebody who was Asian or if she's going to step outside her race, they wanted her and, or they would prefer for her to be with a white guy. 
not a black guy. Yo, what the fuck? So the fact that she was with a black guy pissed her family off anyway. So I would go out there or whatever and she would sneak me in. You know, I would uh, sneak in through her window or whatever. And like I said, that was common. That's still common for, you know, uh, uh, teenagers between the ages of 16 to 19. When you're in high school, you got your high school sweetheart or whatever, and y'all spending time and the family don't condone the guy or the family don't condone, you know, the female dating at that specific time or, or, or age or whatever. It's, no, it's normal for a female to sneak her boyfriend in, not just a random guy, not just different guys coming through smashing. No, just one particular guy who is her boyfriend, who she loves and cares for. Cap. <laughs> <laughs> And they sneak them in. So I would sneak through a window and we would kick it or whatever. I would spend the night and shit like that. Then I would leave or whatever the next day or whatever. And so this one specific day, I go over there and we kicking it. We kicking it, you know, uh, day turns into night, you know, nightfall. And we like, you know what? We used to order pizza a lot and we from Chicago. So you already know what time it is. You know, Chicago, baby, we got the best pizza. That's a motherfucking fact. You know, you look good to me. Mm. You all of them look good. Boy, if you don't... That can't even be, you know, negotiated. It can't be disputed. Okay. Facts. Chicago, we got the best pizza. So we had ordered some pizza that night. So we in the crib, we in her room. We banging on the pizza, you know, we watching our, our shows and shit, you know, we having a good time, just kicking it. And that was back around the time where LimeWire and, Fro and FrostWire was popping where, you know, you can download, you know, music and you can burn CDs. And I used to walk around with my Walkman on all the time because y'all already know I fuck with music. I, I really like music. So, you know, growing up, I used to always have my Walkman on just, just listening to uh, music, different artists or whatever. I feel good. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. And she had a computer in the living room, you know, of her of day crib, their apartment. It was a computer in the living room. And mind you, I didn't go outside the room. You know what I mean? Because, you know, at, at the time, her brother lived there and her pops. It was her brother and her pops who lived there. Her, her brother, her pops. You know, her mom, she used to be away working a lot. So. You know, her brother and her pops lived there, so I ain't go outside the room. I just stayed in the room. But her brother, he already knew what time it was, though, because me and him was cool. He didn't have a problem with it because he already knew that she loved me. I loved her. We spent a lot of time together. We were in a full-blown relationship. So he was cool with it. Like, yo, you know, I, I respect that. You know, y'all together, whatever. At least she's not out here just bouncing from guy to guy. And uh, so he was cool. So I won't worry about the brother. But the brother wasn't there that day. It was just the pops. And the pops, you know, when he did meet me, you know, he didn't like me because I was black. We will not have it. And because of that uh, energy, because of that introduction, me and her pops never got to really get cool. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he really wouldn't allow it. He wouldn't even really allow for, you know, he didn't want to talk to me. You know what I mean? Which, you know, if that's just how they believe or whatever, then that's just what it is. But. You know, because of that reason, I wouldn't go outside of the room. I would just stay in the room. And if I needed something to drink or something like that, she'll go grab it or whatever. So this one specific day, like I said, we ordered pizza. We in the, in the room eating pizza. We watching our shows. We kicking it. And I'm like, you know what? Shit. The CD that I had in my CD player at the time, shit, I didn't listen to that motherfucker so many times. You know, I need something new to listen to. So I'm like, um, real quick, I'm like, you think you can uh, burn me a CD real quick? And she like, yeah. She was like, just uh, write a list of the songs that you want, and I just go burn it for you real quick. And I'm like, all right. So I made out a little list of the songs that I want or whatever, and I gave it to her. Now, once I gave her this list, immediately I thought to myself, I'm like, you know when you go and you burn CDs and you look up for a song and a song will pop up, but it'll be other songs that'll pop up too? that you forgot about or whatever, or songs that you like, you'd be like, oh, damn, I ain't heard this song in a minute. And you'll throw that on there. So I wanted to, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait for your pops to go to sleep, and I'm just going to go in there, and I just, you know, download the music and burn the CD myself. You're an idiot! You know what I'm saying? Just so I could get all the songs that I want or whatever and get some extra songs or whatever. Probably burn like two CDs or whatever. 
So she like, all right, cool, whatever. Because usually when her pops go to, go to bed, he don't come back out the room for the night. He goes to bed, he's in the bed. So we eating pizza, we chilling, and then boom, we hear our pops go in the room. He go in the room, close the door, boom. So now he going to bed for the night. So wait a few minutes just to make sure. And her pops, he had a bathroom in his room. So, you know, with the bathroom being in his room, he didn't even have to come out the room to go to the bathroom if he had to go. So, you know, we really thought the coast was clear. So I, I wait a few minutes. And then when I get comfortable and think, that, okay, he probably in the bed, it's probably coast, the coast is clear. I come out the room. I go into the living room. I sit down at the computer. And I start to download music. Wow, you tripping? At that time, while I'm in there now, I knew just in case if he was to come out the room, we need all the lights to be off, right? Just in case so I could be, make a quick little dive and try to hide or whatever. So we had all the lights off. So the only light that was on was the light from the computer screen. So I'm on the computer or whatever. I'm downloading music. I'm burning CDs or whatever. She was in the room. She was in her room, you know, just chilling. Because we really comfortable. We really thinking like, okay, he's in the bed. The coast is really clear. Her brother ain't here. Even if her brother came came in the crib, he going to be cool because he know, you know what I'm saying? He already know the situation. He cool. You know what I'm saying? Her mother was, you know, way across town. She wasn't even nowhere close to the crib. So we thought the coast was pretty clear. So as I'm downloading the music, all of a sudden, I hear his bedroom door open. Surprise, motherfucker. As soon as I hear his bedroom door open, I make a dive for it. Boom. I hide. I run and I get down and I hide on the other side of the couch because they had the way the couch was, you know, this side you couldn't hide on because this side was like directly like by his, like what his room was. But on the other side, I could hide over there and then, and it was dark. So I was probably going to get, I was probably, I thought I was in the clear. I really did. I thought I was in the clear, bro. You know, he was an older guy. You know, he was an older guy, whatever. He wasn't old, old, but like he was an older guy to the point where, I didn't think that he would have been able to catch on. You understand? That's stupid. Use your common sense. So, and I thought that I moved pretty fast. You know, as soon as I heard that door open, I jetted. Like, and it was dark. So I'm like, okay, he probably ain't see me. I know he ain't see me. So boom, I hear the door open. I jet over there. I hide behind the couch on the other side of the couch, right? He comes out. He goes in the kitchen. He turns the kitchen light on, right? Now, I'm balled up, but the way that I'm balled up, you know, you got a couch, and you know, you know, you got the back end of the couch, right, where your back sits. You sit your ass down, and your back is on, you know, leaning back toward this, and and the wall is behind the couch, and I'm facing this way towards the wall, and I'm curled down, so I can't even like see what's going on. You know, I can't look up at all. I just got a ball up like this. So as I'm like this, all I could do is hear. But when he cut the light on, I knew he cut the light on because when I'm, I'm facing the wall, but I seen the light come on. So I'm like, oh shit, he cut the light on. But still over there by the couch, the light, it was dim over there because he cut the kitchen light on. He didn't cut the living room light on. So as he in the kitchen doing whatever it is that he's doing, my girl comes out the room because she instantly know, oh shit, it's a whole problem. It's a whole fucking problem. She comes out the room like, and she's talking to her pops. Now, her family, they don't talk in English that much. They talk in their language. So they're talking, and I can't understand shit that they're saying because they're speaking in a different language. So I just hear them talking back and forth, and I'm like, okay, what the fuck are they talking about? Like, do it sound aggressive? Do it sound like they're arguing? Like, I couldn't really make it out. So they talking, and she was trying to talk to him to distract him from going in the living room. You know what I mean? So as they talking, I just hear him get louder and louder. And as he gets louder, I hear his foot, I hear footsteps like coming from like out of the kitchen, like towards the living room. When I hear the footsteps, I hear her like, you know, you hear somebody, you can tell they're trying to stop somebody. I hear her like trying to stop trying to stop him from coming into the living room. But I'm, you know, but I still can't see shit. I just hear. So I'm like, hold on, bro. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro, like, is he really coming over here? Bro, when I tell you, I hear her trying to stop the man from coming over here, and then I hear, shing! I fucked up, huh? 
and I knew damn well I was tripping. But the sound that I heard was like a motherfucker grabbed a knife, like off the table or some shit. And when I heard that, I got alarmed. Do you hear me? Because I'm thinking in my head, like, hold on, was that a motherfucking knife that he just grabbed? And then I hear the argument getting more intense. Him, da 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 da. And she's, no, 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 no. And when I heard that, I started to see the shadow get close. So I turn around, like, hold on, like, is this really happening? He coming over here for real? I turn around, bro. And when I turn around, this dude got a knife like this. He got a knife. He's like, intruder, intruder, intruder. Oh, fellas, fellas. <laughs> I know my tags are at a date, but damn. I get up, nigga. I'm starting to bail around the motherfucking crib. I'm running around the motherfucking living room. I'm running around the kitchen. This nigga is literally chasing me around the crib with a kitchen knife. A big ass butcher knife, nigga. Some Michael Myers type shit. And he chased me around the crib. He's like, intruder, intruder. And this nigga chased me with the knife and she's trying to like get in front of him. And I'm running around the crib. But the crazy part about this whole shit was while I'm running around the crib, this dude chasing me with this knife. I'm laughing the whole time. I don't know why the fuck I was laughing, but I was laughing. <laughs> you serious? I guess I was just laughing out of shock. Because I'm like, what the fuck? Is this really happening right now? The dude chased me around the crib with a fucking kitchen knife. So when she trying to stop him, I'm like, shit, I'll bail into her room. I hurry up and get my shit because I know I got to make a quick exit. I grab my shit real quick. As I'm getting my shit together, I hear him say, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. He grabs the phone. And as he gets the phone, he's starting to call the police. And she's telling him, like, no, 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 no. This dude calls the police. He calls the police. As he calls the police, I'm like, okay, I probably got five to ten minutes to make a quick run for it and get as far away from here as I can. So I jump out the motherfucking window. Boom. I put all my clothes on. I jump out the window and it was cold in the motherfucker. This was during the winter time. So it was cold. It was snow on the ground. It was ice. All that shit. So I jump out the window. Boom. And as I'm running, as I'm running down the hill, because they lived in these apartments, as I'm running down the hill, All I hear is sirens and you can see the, the, the red and blue lights and I'm hearing sirens. So I'm like, damn, I ain't even got that much time because the motherfucking police station is right up the street. So I knew they was coming fast. So as I'm running, I'm running. I'm like, I couldn't get far. I couldn't get far. So I ended up, they lived in this building, this complex. So I ended up hiding behind the stairwell of, the, of one of the buildings that was next to her building. I ended up hiding behind one of the stairwells. As I'm hiding behind the stairwell, I'm hearing the police come all through the motherfucking building and I'm high behind the stairwell and then I wait there for a minute. I waited there for a minute, G, like. One hour later. But I'm waiting there and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna wait here until the coast is clear. As I'm waiting there, waiting, 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 and fucking waiting. Wait, 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 hey, hey. Woo! So now I think that the coast is clear. So I poke my head from around the stairwell to look into the parking lot. And as I poke my head out and look into the parking lot, it's a cop sitting right there. It's a cop sitting right there waiting for my ass. Like he knew I was there. So boom, they said, come out, come out, whatever. I don't know how the fuck they even knew I was behind the fucking stairwell because they ain't see me. There's no way they could have seen me because I hid before they got there. But they caught me or whatever. So I come out the stairwell, my hands up, whatever. Boom. They put me in handcuffs. They put me in the police car. Then they take me back over to her building. When we get back to her building, the police is talking to her pops. He's like, yeah, he's, he's an intruder. You know, he don't have permission to be here. All this, then the third. So I'm like, damn, bro. Like, like, they're about to hit me with a motherfucking burglary charge. And I, ain't, I don't even be on stupid shit like that. But I'm like, I'm about to get hit with a charge like that. But then they asked my girl at the time. They said, well, how old are you? She said 18. She was 18 at the time. So they're like, okay, well, did he have permission from you to be here? She said, yes. 
So the police was like, well, we can't hit him with a burglary charge. You know what I'm saying? Because technically he's not an intruder. You know, somebody who was over the age of 18, you know, had uh, gave him permission to be there. So technically he was not a burglar and he had permission to be there. So the police let me out the car, took me out the handcuffs. Her pops was pissed off because they, could, they didn't charge me. They couldn't charge me. And because she gave the police... Uh, okay, did I, for me to be there, telling her that, yeah, I gave him the permission to be here. Her pops was like, what? So her pops kicked her out the crib. Now get the fuck out of here before I kick your ass. So that night, her cousin had to come over and she had to grab her shit. I grabbed my few things and our cousin picked us up and we went and we spent the night at her cousin's crib uh, overnight that night. Her mama was pissed. Her family was pissed when they found out about the whole situation. So we spent the night at her cousin's crib. So the next morning we get up, her cousin like, okay, well, you know, they talked. So she was going to stay over her cousin's crib for a while. So I was about to head back to the crib. So she was like, well, is it over? And I'm like, well, shit, I don't know. Because now her cousin lives even further away. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, it's probably, ain't, it's probably not even possible for me to come all the way out here, you know, at that time without a car. So I'm like, well, you know, we'll, you know, try to work something out, but shit. For now, we probably ain't gonna be able to see each other for a minute because you're gonna live over, you're gonna be living over here. So, long story short, man, you know, her family ended up, you know, taking her back in. They forgave her or whatever. And uh, to be honest with you, we kept doing it. We kept, you know, she kept sneaking me in. I kept coming over there to spend time. But like I said, it wasn't on no bullshit like, I'm coming over there to use this girl. I'm bringing other guys over there. She got different guys coming over there. I was not dis I was not coming over there and being disrespectful in that manner. She was over the age of 18. She was a grown ass woman. She can make her own decisions and she lived in that house. You understand? So she welcomed me in that house and I used to come over to spend time with her. And we would come over. I would come over. We'd have a good time, man. We watched movies. We watched favorite TV shows. We played games, all that type of shit, man. I mean, you know, if I wouldn't have been there, she would have been bored as fuck. Child, please. Because she's in a house with just an old man and her brother was never there. You know, her brother was always out and gone and shit. So she just been bored out of fucking mind anyway. So I basically came over there and I was keeping her company. But people so quick to look at shit from a negative perspective without even giving it a fucking chance or even giving it a, a, a clear understanding on, okay, what's going on? Why it's going on? How it's going on? She's 18 years old. She's not, like it's not like she was 13 or 14. Then I can completely understand a motherfucker being pissed. She was a grown ass woman. She was 18 years old because a senior in high school, just graduating. You understand what I'm saying? So my whole thing was, you know, they, 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 they took that shit too far. They took that shit and ran with it. They took that shit further than it should have went, further than it needed to be. You know, they really tweaked on some stupid shit. But at the end of the day, bro, uh, yeah, man, me and her, we had been, we had, we stayed together from that time. We were together for years. You understand? We were together for years and we have built a lot of things in that relationship. You know, that relationship is over and, you know, it's not existing anymore. But at that time, you know, it was a lot that came out of that. So, like I said, it's not like, you know, what we were doing necessarily bad. But I understand from her family's perspective, or I guess, you know, why they felt the way they felt to some degree. Cap. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out man shout out to you know uh her her pops man rp to her pops her pops passed away uh me and him never got a chance to reconcile or never got a chance to really speak and get a clear understanding but uh yeah man so that was my story time on the time my ex pops chased me around the crib with a motherfucking butcher knife cuz a butcher knife some michael myers type shit you understand all right, man, y'all already know what time it is, man. I'm about to go ahead and get up out of here, but I appreciate all of y'all, man. I love all of y'all. Thanks for coming by my channel. Thanks for watching this video. If you're not a part of this amazing Wolf Gang, what's the, what is you doing? What is you doing? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, for real. Don't be lame all your life. Hit that motherfucking like. Hit that subscribe. Become a part of this amazing Wolf Gang, baby, because we're going to do big things, baby. We creeping, we rolling, we sliding. You already know how I'm coming. Straight like that. Wolf Gang. You always stressing me, you always testing me I gotta leave cause if not you'll be the death of me Thought you had my back, thought you would never fold Instead of appreciating the rainbow, you too thirsty for the gold Baby you changed on me, why you change on me? I'm still ten toes posted, I'm still the same homie Not to mention I sacrificed my whole life for you I rearranged everything in my life for you I relocated when we dated just to save us 
this wouldn't work, so I had to save us. I put up with your family, your brother, mother, and all. She controlled all your moves, you gave her the ball. She don't like me, I don't like her either. So you make 